All right, hello everybody and welcome. We are doing a Hangout today on Helpouts. Google has rolled out a new product and we think it might have some interesting implications for healthcare as a whole for individual practitioners and maybe beyond. So we have a, a good little panel here today. I'm gonna introduce the rest of my panelists here. Why don't we start with uh, Jason Pratt. Hi there, uh, I'm Jason Pratt. I'm located in Jacksonville, Florida. I work with uh, Mayo Clinic and the Mayo Clinic Center for Social Media. So uh, glad to hear talk about Hangouts, or talk about Helpouts on Hangout. Awesome, and, and Jason? Jason number two. <laughs> Jason number two. I'm Jason Lorenzen. I'm the social media specialist here at Houston Methodist in Houston, Texas. Awesome, very cool. And Amanda? I'm Amanda Changuris. I am the marketing, communications, and social media specialist at Frederick Memorial Hospital in Frederick, Maryland. Awesome, cool. And you know, I'm Stephen Contreras with Daily RX, social media director here. So I think we're going to let Jason Pratt kick it off today from Mayo and kind of talk a little bit about what we think Hangouts are, so, Helpouts are so far. And that's not the first, <laughs> last time that's going to happen. Yeah. So, uh, so of course, Google Hangouts is one of the you know, top features of Google Plus, and it's kind of been one of the, uh, the things that's really caught on the most for what differentiates Google Plus from other social platforms out there. And uh, so, you know, obviously Google sees this, and they've decided to build a, something, you know, a layer on top of Hangouts called Helpouts, where, you know, imagine if you want an expert at any given time to help you with something, whether it's cooking or yoga, or you want some healthcare consulting, um, you want to talk with anybody, you know, say on, on uh, music, you want to learn how to play, play guitar, you can now get help at any time, anywhere, uh, whenever, and then basically just dial into that expert searching Google's database. So it's, it's a human-powered uh, system that, you know, Google's created on this Hangouts layer. So you can either participate, you know, if, if you're an expert on uh, teaching somebody how to play guitar, you can tell Google, hey, I would like to participate as somebody that can help out anybody else. And uh, so then if that person on the other end wants to learn to play guitar, they can see, see, uh, seek you out and then choose to um, get a one-on-one -on -one training uh, education with you using Helpouts. It's a pretty cool uh, idea by Google. Um, I think this is going to have a huge uh, implication with a lot of businesses, individuals, but, and then also in healthcare. Yeah, I agree, Jason. I think the only question is going to be how far down the rabbit hole is this going to go? I mean, uh, from a healthcare standpoint, would this be even a tool that, um, you know, maybe a rural hospital could use to communicate with a, a, a big, larger hospital, kind of get a little bit more insight and information on specific patients and possible, you know, illnesses or things that that rural hospital is not equipped to deal with? And the most interesting thing is this is all... HIPAA protected. Right. And I think that's one of the key ingredients here is the fact that it is, you know, Google's, when, when they, before they laid out this platform, uh, launched it to the public, you know, they've been doing a beta test with, you know, internally um, with about a thousand people and some businesses. And right away they made sure that they were HIPAA compliant because they saw this as a big uh, area for healthcare. And I, and I think that's, very key what you said about the for the rural hospitals and clinics that may not have access you know in their in their backyard for um, for you know experts in certain medical areas they can seek them out and get help you know over the web using helpouts and perhaps at a at a small fee sort of an extension of what uh, telemedicine has been doing sort of you know in a formalized way but you don't have to then set up that formal agreement with the counterpart to have them available, you know, certain hours or anything like that. This can sort of be an, an ad hoc as needed. You know, I need a specialist in cardiac care, you know, and I can reach out, say, to the Mayo Clinic or to some other, you know, large scale, uh, maybe education based, you know, medical center that has an expert that I need and only pay for that segment of time versus an ongoing agreement where you'd have to pay sort of a maintenance schedule. And, uh, you know, one thing here is that I, th I think a lot of hospitals or clinics have probably been wanting to do something like this with telemedicine. Mm -hmm. But if you're a, sm if you're a small uh, hospital, I mean, even if you're a big hospital, it's tough to have a team and develop these resources to be able to carry on that goal of having this 
feature. So it's like sort of, you know, Google's sort of handing it over to you and saying, hey, we have a product that you could use, um, and, it, and actually you can make money with it. And that's what's important here is that it's, it is going to have a, um, a way to where that hospital can use the product but also charge for it. And I did see, uh, I looked up, did a little tiny bit of research yesterday and found out that apparently it's an 80-20 split. So you get, eight, or the expert gets 80% and Google gets 20% of whatever you charge. So that seemed, I thought it'd be closer to 50-50 if I had to ballpark it, but. That's pretty good. That's, uh, that's a better split than what an artist may make, you know, selling their music on the, on the, online. So. Uh, Amanda, what, what have, have you seen any, um, what would you say some of the average cost for some of the services or some of the types of um, uh, instruction on the help outs? Have you n noticed any kind of average or what people are charging? There's a pretty decent range it looks like from what I've seen. I think uh, most seem to be about a dollar a minute, I mean in that ballpark, but then there are some that are, you know, $100 for a half hour or something like that. So it, it I think it varies based on the area of expertise and then probably the individual, how valuable they think their time is. Right. And since it's set by the individual, if they can get some, if they can get people to come in and, and pay for those help outs at that rate, great. If it's not going so well, they might think about lowering their price, but it says it's under their control. That's a good place to, you know, possibly have some flexibility. And I know one thing I did notice is that, um, and Google made it very clear on when you when you go to helpouts.google.com, which of course is where you can learn more about helpouts and participate in them um, and watch them, but uh, is that there's a money back guarantee they offer and they want people to know that. So at least right up front, it's a it's a new technology, new type, it's a new idea really, and you know if you feel you spent. 20 minutes trying to learn how to use Adobe Photoshop and you paid somebody to teach you that and they didn't do that great of a job, Google Plus is saying, you know, we can refund you if need be. And that's an, I think that's an important layer too because I'd be somewhat skeptical, you know, who's going to be on the other end? Do they really know what they're talking about? I mean, okay, there, I assume there's some sort of check, some sort of, you know, you have to have at least some basis to you know, sign up to be, to hold a help out, but does Google really know how much I know, say, about Photoshop? You know, I could teach some basics, but I'm not a graphic designer, so I don't know it as in-depth as somebody else might. So that layer, layer of protection is, uh, I think, really good, really good idea. Yeah. And, and a rating system, you know, you're going to want to keep track of these people, so I wonder if it's going to be I'll go ahead and put in a Zagat rating that will appear on their Google Plus page and it will even come up in search results and all that good stuff. So just tie it and all, getting help outs into, you know, Google Plus and making sure that that's all tied together too. That would be really interesting. Uh, Jason, what do you think you would use this for in Houston? Well, I was just going to jump on what you were saying there too. You know it's Google, so it's all going to be like integrated in authorship, you know, SEO. It's all going to come back together at some point. Um, you know, the thing I'm kind of interested in is uh, the a la carte pricing, so the consumer, you know, has a little more power there, and then, you know, the scheduling feature, and the fact that, you know, in healthcare, when we try to roll out software, um, you know, it's a very big ship, so anytime we want to turn it, it takes a long time, so, you know, as opposed to, you know, saying, let's get this vendor, let's bat them, let's get the software, let's run it through the IT committee, and then to legal, you know, it could be like two years out before you do any kind of telemedicine, you know, for your average patient. But with, you know, just going to legal and say, you know, we already use Google+, Plus, we already use Google+, Apps, you should have a much better precedent there to really move forward at a faster pace. So that's what really excites me, because I'm always like, oh, new technology, you know, ways to connect with our patients, and then, you know, we run into that brunt of, you know, well, we got to go through legal and all this, so... I think we have a nice precedent there to really jump on things fast. And just from the patient's perspective, you know, I was looking through all the healthcare stuff, you know, there's a lot of trainers and, you know, kind of armchair nutritionists, but, you know, how vetted are they versus, you know, a doctor or an RD? So I think the consumer is going to have that nice, you know, vote of confidence, like if they can go to a brand-oriented page and, you know, 
they see Houston Methodist or Mayo Clinic or any of these hospitals and then the doctors or staff connect to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's a great point. And, and I wonder if it'll ever become more practical for a doctor to say, hey, you know what, I see all my patients this way. I charge $30 for 30 minutes, one after another they come in. I have my schedule, this works great, TIPA compliant, maybe they you know, send me their Fitbit information, I have their vitals, and boom, I can <laughs> diagnose them somewhat just over the, over the internet. <laughs> it's really well, interesting. And, and we know, you know, a big time saver for docs now is they know like that list of questions they always get. And, so. they just don't, and they don't have time to, you know, go over it with every single patient because, you know, as they're dealing with one patient, they're getting ready for another. So if they can, you know, pre-record some help outs and just direct people to those, you know, maybe those are the freebies, you know, of, you know, just general questions they get all the time. I think that would be really helpful to people as well. Well, I, th I think then, uh, you know, the biggest competitor with uh, help outs would be Google themselves with, obviously, with YouTube. Mm -hmm because we already have lots of how-to videos, um, you know, how to cook, how to do yoga, how to be better at golfing. Um, and then, you know, in healthcare, Mayo Clinic, I mean, we have lots of videos in, from kind of answering those sort of softball questions that somebody might ask, let's say on, um, you know, if, if I'm having knee problems and, I'll, and I, need, I think I might need, need to have surgery or possibly a knee replacement, you know, we have our physician already on YouTube telling you, here's what it, you would go, here's what the symptoms you may have, and here's what you would experience to, ha to um, go through a knee surgery or a knee replacement, and here's kind of the follow-up and how long it would take you to, you know, get better. So, you know, YouTube is excellent for that, so it's like, but now Health Outs is that one-on-one -on -one answering those live questions, perhaps after you've already, because if you're savvy enough to already be on Health Outs and using them, you've probably watched a lot of that person's or that company's YouTube channel um, or you've already done a lot of Googling and searching and trying to find as much answer as possible. And I see Google Help Outs as sort of that next, that last resort type thing where, um, and especially for people in remote areas, remote location that don't have access nearby. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like it's making the jump from the, like, how-to video to the how-with video, you know. Let's make this meringue together. Let's do this downward dog together, and you can watch me and ask questions along the way. I know I'm guilty of rewinding many YouTube videos on how to do things. I'm like, well, what, what did they say? Oh, I missed that part. You get me Yeah. And I did think it was interesting. I saw that, um, and I'm looking down at my phone, sorry to read this, but in an article that um, doctors are apparently saying, you know, if you're a patient, I can help you work with your primary care team, we can just discuss medical conditions, medication use, communication tips, but it says, I do not want to replace your primary care provider's advice. That relationship's important. This is not a professional consult. I will not order any tests or write any prescriptions for you. And that's sort of a disclaimer that this one physician is offering. And I thought that was interesting because, you know, yeah, okay, it is, it's a, it's a consultation, but you know, I can't possibly know the background of every person who, like the background, enough of the background to give clinically specific medical advice to somebody who contacts me through this uh, method. You know, I can give it, you know, sort of a certain level, but not a full level that I could give a patient who I'm seeing on a regular basis. Do you guys remember that, uh, well, Google had a product, um, I think they came out with about five years ago. It started with uh, started with a K, and it was a, it was it was like a, a knowledge base. I, I, um, God, I'm trying to remember what they called what it was called, but um, it was sort of like a, a hum, uh, sort of like their version of a Wikipedia, sort of, um, where it, they had these. What'd you say? Was it Quora? Uh, no, not 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 Quora. Okay. Um, I was thinking K Sound. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but anyways, it's I feel like help out because they they ended that product after about three or four years. But I feel like and that product was something almost just like this, where you could claim expertise in an area and you would be the one writing about it. So it was almost a written component, exactly like help outs, where help outs is now now that Google has an engine which is Hangouts to build this platform on. 
that has been successful and works and um, from a technology standpoint works across multiple devices, they can just throw this, you know, help outs layer over top and then get these, have these experts speaking on video where in the past their written component of this that they did try and it didn't, and they en ended it, didn't work. So I would hope that perhaps this doesn't go the same way. I don't think, I'm not saying it would, but I'm, it's like almost they saw that and they said, well, people want that expert, but in, in this format it didn't work well, but maybe with the video, but a live interaction, that's, that's what's key. It's not just recorded video, but it's the live, like what you just said, Stephen, it's like, um, um, am I making this lemon meringue correctly and they can watch you making it? No, you need to you know, spin the spoon three times to the left, not to the right. Um, but yeah, it reminds me of that. I was, I'm try, I, maybe uh, well, it'll come to me, and, we'll, and I'll let you guys know. Well, and you, you have to wonder how it's going to, you know, if, it, uh, if they give it some, you know, if they put some grease on the wheels, how is it going to be integrated into Google search? You know, if, if you type in a search phrase that's health-related, you know, is it going to say, these help-out experts are in your area? and they have time available on your schedule because, you know, your Google Calendar can be integrated into your search. And they could say, we noticed you have some time available on Tuesday at 2. Because, I mean, that's how everything Google-related is now. If you type in, you know, if you have a, an airline ticket in your, you know, Gmail account, it's going to appear in your search results. So, And we'll just go ahead and reach in your Google Wallet, and we'll take the <laughs> payment, and there you go. You're ready. You're all set. You're booked. You didn't even have to lift the finger. <laughs> no, that, that's a great point, Jason. And, and that's something key to bring up, too, is the fact that it is, you know, they're using Google Wallet to make the, the purchase here. So, again, I'm, I'm, I remember just about a month ago they introduced Google Wallet onto the iPhone, where it's been on the Android phone for a while, of course. But it, it's like they've, you know, Google's this company that they've been building products over time, and they're really good at, uh, adding on to the layers of things that are working and getting rid of the things that do not work. And, you know, they see, obviously, Google's working well, Gmail works well, and to be a part of Google+, Plus, it's like we're, you're already on Gmail, just kind of check this box, now you're on Google+, Plus. we already have your information, and then we can get, and then if you're on Google Wallet, that's the way you pay it for help out. So it's like building upon these networks and these communities that they've been building over time and just adding to it. And, adding the things that have worked well. No, absolutely, I agree. And you know, another Google product that I'll bring up real quick, in Austin, we're the second city that they're going to roll out Google Fiber in, and I went to the, the press release for, for that product, and the first thing that they mentioned was the implications that this would have in healthcare, healthcare and telemedicine, and they showed on the screen a picture of a doctor teleconferencing with the patient, and I was like, Oh great, it's a hangout, but maybe what I was seeing was, you know, maybe that was a help out and they do have big plans for this. I mean that just the fact that it's the HIPAA compliance of that just really makes me think that this is going to be something they're really going to try to push. Oh yeah, for sure. So, uh, what would you guys I have a question for you. What would what would you what would you pay for right now to uh, do a help out? What would you want to learn and and how much would you would you pay? see here. Well, you know, you, you can think about it from, you know, the, the different kind of doctor visits you may have. So, you know, what's your typical copay going to be for something? You know, that might be a, a good starting point. That's yeah. That's Absolutely. Good. I mean, you might get a 20-minute help out instead of a 10-minute doctor visit and get roughly the same amount of information. Well, and, um, and you have to think about all the, you know, friction we're taking out of things. You know, when you go to the doctor, you fill out everything online ahead of time and they still make you fill it out again <laughs> when you get there and you're just sitting there waiting and you're in an environment with people that probably aren't feeling well. Um, so this this isn't a very hard sell I think for most consumers. Well sure and plus when you're sick do you want to you know get up and go to the doctor? I mean if you think you need a prescription like a, mm -hmm. you know antiviral or something like that and everybody when they're sick thinks they need one but um, <laughs> they just sneak that in um, 
you know, okay, yeah, you're going to need to physically go there because this isn't going to help you. But if you're sort of, you know, you want that sort of pre-screening, like my throat's sore, but I don't really know what's going on. And then you can exactly. do a help out and sort of find out if you need to go see your primary care doctor or you need to go to immediate care or urgent care or whatever it is in your area. That might be a decent investment to save yourself the trouble if they're like, oh, no, that, that really sounds like it's more allergies or something like that. Maybe. And to, you, and to save people from the, you know, every symptom I type online into a search engine tells me I have cancer, yes. you know, kind of <laughs> scenario. <laughs> Amanda, you just, get away from that. <laughs> Amanda, you gave me the image of people just holding their iPhones up to their mouths. Like, you see it back there? Is this looking plain? Let me turn on my flashlight app. <laughs> don't not um, try it, okay? It could I was, work. I was thinking uh, kind of like what you just said is, you know, as we get faster internet, let's say with like Google Fiber, um, but as we get faster internet, um, better bandwidth you over live video and higher resolution, um, I mean, you could uh, perhaps do some, diagnose somebody completely over video um, where right now it's a little tougher. If, like let's say it was, um, you know, they had to look at your skin for a dermatology appointment, and you know, maybe check a mole, and you hold your hand up to the video cam, the, the video webcam, and say, well, you know, does this look like it's changed in the past six months? And they can um, help diagnose that. Where it, that's that's where having much faster internet speed bandwidth is going to help. Because even like right now when we're chatting, I mean, we have fast bandwidth, but still there's a lag a little bit with this chat um, because of that limitations. Sure, and I've seen apps that do just that with the, the dermatology apps, like, you know, is this melanoma? And they're not, you know, 100% foolproof or anything like that, but there are some that are a lot better than others, and most of them are actually, you take a picture and it sends to a, a dermatologist or an expert in the field, and they review it just like they would review, you know, they would look at your skin, but they're looking at a picture instead. And so there isn't a, a clinical guarantee there, but it's certainly setting precedent for something like this once the, uh, the video is up to speed. Um, and, and I wanted to answer your question, Stephen, about what would I pay for. Uh, this isn't healthcare related, but, um, you know, I think it would be cool to, like, I like to go uh, hiking and camping. So if perhaps I was to if there was somebody that was an expert on hiking, let's say the Appalachian Trail, they've, they've done it, you know, several times and they know the ins and outs, I would love to pay, you know, 20 minutes of time, 30 minutes of time to get all their tips and tricks that they learn from, you know, being out in the woods for two months. Yeah. Especially if I, you know, did some research on that person or just read the feedback on their, you know, on their page within Helpouts because every person that's doing it has like their own page that where they have a rating and you know five stars four stars with user feedback that have uh, done help outs with them in the past it, um, I, I think that'd be awesome to do totally I mean my answer to my own question is essentially like how can I get better at home improvement maybe learn how to wire a lamp or you know something <laughs> something that would make me a little bit more handy around the house to my wife you know yeah, <laughs> and I think the things that are going to be, the things that people are going to pay for are those things that, that require feedback on, say, my end as the person that's, um, that's watching the help out. It's, so those things like, you know, how to screw in a light bulb, you could learn obviously with, say, YouTube, but something where that person on the other end had to see, get feed, you know, live feedback and say, okay, no, that's not how you do it, um, or you need to, you know, move just a little bit to the left or right or, you know, whatever that required that live interaction. Those are the things that, that are going to be, probably be most successful, I think, with help outs. I think yeah, this I, could be useful. Oh. Um, sorry. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, this could be really useful for something like car seat checks because think about the interaction and think about how many people do it incorrectly and how easy it would be as long as you could get like we were saying, the quality video that you would need to say, oh, no, 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 that strap needs to go underneath or whatever it is. And then you've got that interaction right on the spot and when you need it. And, you know, it's a real safety issue. Yeah, I could also see it being a big boon for uh, certain kinds of physical therapy. 
as mm -hmm. as well there, you know. Because when I was looking at the yoga videos, I went, ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that. That's Everything. Not you. <laughs> um, so, and I'm I seeing some question. veterinarian pet wellness stuff on there, so I... I do want to see people kind of chasing down their cat or dog with their phone or computer being like, hey, how's he doing? <laughs> Come back here. Yeah, so uh, I remember that, that Google product that I was talking about earlier. It was called uh, Google Knoll, K-N-O-L. So if you go to knol.google.com, you'd still see their page, but it says we've discontinued this product back in, it was like early 2012. And uh, I want to say they started it around 06. Six or 07, um, probably around 07, but it was almost a very, very similar to this, but a written component uh, where they were sort of taking the model of Wikipedia, but instead of allowing anybody to write, it's where Wikipedia is obviously more like an encyclopedia, where Google Knoll was answering ex things on, ex you know, if you're an expert on photography, you know, you do a write-up about what's the you know, what shutter speeds to shoot, you know, at a, say, a nighttime football game. You might write up an article about that because you, you have been deemed as an expert in photography. So this, to me, looks like Google's version 2 of Google Null. Very cool. And, and with that comment, Jason, I think we should probably go down the line one more time, maybe give a little final thought about what we would maybe like to see for a help outs in the future or just... Any kind of final thought? So, Jason, Pratt, why don't we go ahead and start with you? All right. Um, hmm. You know, I, I would like to see the, um, the the lot of the experts kind of rise to the top and to where you know that you know these top these ten people are the very best in in as uh, in photography or the very best in using social media, Google Plus. Um, these are the top experts in nutrition, and um, I, I really hope to see this product succeed because I can, I, you know, I see it being very helpful um, for people. And the fact that it does work with a mobile phone is key to me, you know, because a, a lot of you know, your non-technical um, users are going to probably be using this from a mobile device. All right, Jason, did you want to take a stab at it? Yeah, I, I think the thing I'm most excited about is just the feedback mechanism and the reviews and the way the customers can communicate with you directly. And so you have that record there of, you know, because, you know, we hear it all the time. Sometimes, you know, that doctors don't necessarily have the best bedside manners. And, you know, they, they're, they're very knowledgeable on topics, but they're just not the best at communicating with folks. So I think this is a, a good way for them to realize, okay, you know, I am knowledgeable in my field, but, you know, here's a better way to, you know, talk about this certain subject with someone. Mm -hmm. Amanda? I'm sort of trying to think, how can I put this to use in my current role with my hospital? Kind of, you know, where do I want to start? And sort of what's there right now seems to be some like nutrition, there's some lactation consulting, some sort of wellness focus. Um, and so I'm kind of trying to think where is sort of the opportunity still wide open and, and strategically, you know, where should I start lobbying my experts to try and, and get involved with this? You know, I've requested a code and we'll have to see, you know, what kind of lag time there is, how, how long it takes to actually get a code and get started. But I'm sort of trying to formulate a plan and, and work from there. Awesome. Very cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for the day. I hope that this is, a, you know, a, a first of many steps in the synergy between you know, health care and social media to kind of show each other that you can work together and use these tools for better patient education. I hope that that is what comes out of that. If you have any questions about what we were talking about today, you can go to helpouts.google.com and learn some more information. Like Amanda was just mentioning, you still do have to submit for a code to become uh, a helper router, I suppose. But i um, not sure when that's going to fully roll out to everybody. So I uh, just wanted to sign off for, for today and uh, say goodbye. Thank you, Jason, Jason, and Amanda, and have a great weekend. Thanks, Thank Steve. you. See you guys.
Bye-bye. Bye.